I made a video about intraocular pressure, which is the pressure inside your eyes. You guys loved it, you had questions, and today I'm gonna to answer those questions and give you a little bit more information. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. Here on this channel, I make educational videos about, about, about. Here on this channel, I post educational videos about eye health and vision products. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and make sure to hit the bell so you never miss a video. While you're at it, I've included some helpful information down below in the show notes. In particular, we're talking about two different studies today and I'll link the summaries from those studies down below. So today we're talking a little bit more about intraocular pressure. Now, I originally talked about this about a year, year and a half ago, and so I'll make sure to link that video up above so you can have a primer on intraocular pressure. So just as a recap, if you're not familiar, we need to go to eye school because you guys are my pupils. So pupils, let's go to eye school. <laughs> but then let's talk about intraocular pressure. So intraocular pressure is the fact that everybody has a pressure within their eyes. It's a fluid pressure and the pressure is always being regulated by your eye. So there's an aqueous flow throughout the eye and eye pressure, um, eye fluid is continually kind of circulated and your eye has sort of a resulting pressure. Most of the time, if you have high pressure in your eyes, that's either because your filtration system isn't circulating fluid appropriately, or maybe you're making too much fluid yourself. There are secondary reasons why you can have high pressure in your eyes. Um, folks that have had diabetic retinopathy, problems with um, neovascular issues in the angle of their eye, which is where the filtration system lives. Folks that have had a lot of inflammation in their eyes in the past, they can kind of have a secondary reason for an increase in pressure. The same is true if you've had a trauma to your eyes that impacts that drainage angle of the eye. Notwithstanding those reasons for your pressure to be high, I want to talk about today why your eye pressure might be high and some things that it can influence your pressure either being high or being low. So first of all, just as a recap, what's normal is between 10 and 21. That's measured in millimeters of mercury. We measure assuming that the front surface thickness of your eye is average. So all of our machines are calibrated to assume that your eye is about 545 millimeters thick. But if your eye cornea itself tends is thicker or thinner, that can impact your true pressure reading. Here's some ways that we can measure pressure. This right here is a Tona pen. We use a Tona pen with a little cover on it and just gently tap the front of the eye to get a pressure reading. This is an eye care tonometer. This has a tiny little probe here that kind of comes out and measures how much pressure is in your eye. This one requires no drops at all. You may have also heard of the air puff test. The air puff test is also known as the NCT or non-contact tonometer. And that's done in a lot of offices as well. And finally, there's a blue light test that I myself perform and all doctors perform that can test your pressure as well. So the question when it comes to pressure is, does it matter or not, okay? So I think last time we talked about pressure being high in an eye does not automatically mean that you are at risk for glaucoma or that you have glaucoma. It's just one measurement, one reading that happens during your eye exam. But taken in context with other readings from your eye exam may indicate either that you're at risk for glaucoma, that you have glaucoma, or that your eyes are healthy. So as a reading itself, like I said, normal runs between 10 and 21. But in the case of glaucoma, it doesn't really matter if your pressure is 25 or if it's 15. If that pressure is too high for your eye, then it's too high. I have plenty of glaucoma patients whose pressure is 15 um, versus 20 or 25 or 30. And at that point, it's all about making the pressure low enough for that person. So how did we come to understand pressure and when it matters and what the risk factors are? 
So um, back in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s, there was a really huge um, study that was done called the Ocular Hypertensive Treatment Trial. So ocular hypertension is when that pressure is above 21 in either eye. And the question at the time was, does having high eye pressure always cause glaucoma? Does it do so in certain circumstances? And can we identify any risk factors so that if I have a patient in my clinic whose pressure is over 20, what do I tell them? And how often do I need to monitor for glaucoma? So the ocular hypertensive treatment study was a massive, absolutely massive study. A personal note with that, I actually, in 2009 and 2010, I was an ocular disease resident in optometry at Bascom Palmer Eye Institute down in Miami, Florida. And I worked with one of the doctors who was a principal investigator on the ocular hypertensive treatment study. And at that time, we were still seeing patients who had had previously been enrolled in the OAT study or ocular hypertensive treatment study. This study was a randomized controlled trial to determine the safety and the efficacy of hypotensive drugs in the case of ocular hypertension. So in this study, one eye had to be between 24 and 32, and the opposite eye had to be between 21 and 32. So you're looking at both eyes that are above that threshold of the widely considered normal number of 21. These patients were then randomized to either treatment or observation arms of the trial, and it was double-blinded, I believe, to make sure that the results were, you know, real. <laughs> so they were looking at the cumulative probability over the years of this study to either develop primary open angle glaucoma, so going from that level of just having high pressure to having glaucomatous change versus not. So what was found is that there was a 4.4% um, cumulative probability to progress to glaucoma within the treatment arm. So of the folks that took medication to lower their eye pressure, only 4.4% would go on to develop glaucoma over the course of the study. However, in the non-treatment arm, 9.5% progressed to having glaucoma over the course of the study. But one of the most important things that came out of the OAT study was identifying risk factors that made folks more likely to develop glaucoma with high pressure. We still use these risk profiles today to figure out which patients to treat in our clinics versus which to observe and monitor carefully. I actually didn't write down the conclusive list of those risk factors from the OAT study, but I can kind of rattle, I think, most of them off the top of my head. So age is a risk factor, race is a risk factor, um, cor central corneal thickness, IOP itself, um, family history is in there as a risk factor, and then you've got Drantz hemorrhages or hemes at the um, site of the optic nerve. That one was really interesting because it was kind of identified after the fact. As part of the study, they were taking photographs of all the patient's nerves, and it was only when they went back and looked at them later that they saw Drantz hemorrhages in folks. And um, that was just a really interesting finding. These are little hemorrhages, sliver-like, that occur at the optic nerve. You see these occasionally, and they are a sort of an indicator that there is a higher risk of developing glaucoma. So that's the ocular hypertensive treatment trial. It was absolutely a monster trial. I'll link the summary of that down below, but that has helped shape our understanding of risk factors when it comes to glaucoma. Ugh. So one of the other often cited studies was the European Glaucoma Prevention Study um, that showed uh, the, basically the two treatment arms in that were using a hypotensive, specifically dorazolamide, versus a placebo. And the results of that study were, was that there was no statistically significant difference between medical therapy and placebo in decreasing the primary open angle glaucoma in a large group of patients at moderate risk. So um, there have been several other studies, and we won't get into all of that today, but the one that we mostly follow in the U.S. is looking at the ocular hypertensive treatment trial and the risk factors that were developed out of that. All right, so moving on from the recap of, of 
um, high eye pressure, what it is, what we use to look for it, um, and some of the studies that we're using every day in clinic that shaped the way we think about high eye pressure. We'll kind of move into what some of your questions were. So I had a lot of questions on that last video about things that raise intraocular pressure. And so I've come up with what is, you know, most certainly not um, the total list, but I did try really hard to come up with all the things that could raise your intraocular pressure. So number one, steroid use. And steroid use can be topical steroid use. It can be inhaled corticosteroids like you would use in a nasal spray. It can be oral corticosteroids as um, Rx by a doctor, but it could also be like, you know, pump you up steroids that I don't clearly know anything about. But that type of steroid can raise your eye pressure as well. So any type of steroid use is important, especially if you start having high eye pressure to let your doctor, hey, hey, I have rheumatoid arthritis and I've had lots of bouts of being on um, steroids. Could that be affecting my eye pressure? Because the answer is absolutely yes, it could. Um, holding your breath. So I see this every day in clinic. If somebody's a little bit nervous about having their eye pressure taken and they hold their breath while I take it, they can artificially raise that pressure. Now that is very just short term, obviously, but it absolutely raises the pressure. A tight necktie. Um, I didn't find the study for this, but in school I learned about a study that said men who wore neckties every day that were tight um, tended to have higher intraocular pressure. So that sort of pressure around your neck, um, all the more reason to hang out in sweats. <laughs> um, the next one is yoga. So surprise, but head down positions in yoga are actually going to increase your intraocular pressure. Likewise, I would suspect if you're just like a handstand freak, and you want to do handstands while you watch TV, that's going to raise your intraocular pressure. So being in that inverted position is going to raise pressure. The next thing would be like coughing, vomiting, straining, Valsalvin maneuver as in weightlifting, like that sort of thing is going to raise your eye pressure, much like holding your breath but also just your simple coughing, sneezing, vomiting is gonna raise that pressure temporarily as well. Wind instruments, beware the oboe and the trumpet. Wind instruments will raise your eye pressure. <laughs> okay, let's get into things that lower your eye pressure. So this question was asked a lot and the number one thing we're just gonna address Offhand is marijuana. Does marijuana decrease your eye pressure? Yes, it does. I can tell you a story. <laughs> when I was a student and I was taking my practicals down in Florida, you had to have your own patient. And I didn't have my own patient, so um, myself and a couple friends just found patients on the beach. And it turned out that my patient had smoked that day. So when I went to check his eye pressure during the exam, it was like seven. <laughs> and I didn't realize until after he's like, oh yeah, I didn't realize I need. So yeah, marijuana will decrease your eye pressure, but it's a very short duration. Um, my patients will also joke like, oh, I have glaucoma. Can you give me a prescription for medical marijuana? Um, no, our drops are still much, much better than marijuana and reducing eye pressure and doing it in a way that is, you know, measurable and sustainable and, you know, sort of regulated. So no, marijuana, yes, it will raise your, or, I'm sorry, yes, it will lower your eye pressure, but not in a controlled way. The second is regular exercise. You know, problems with insulin levels and diabetes can be associated with an increased risk of glaucoma. And so exercise, staying healthy in general has been shown also to lower your eye pressure. Um, avoidance of things that, high, that raise your intraocular pressure. So avoid vomiting, avoid steroids, all of those. Um, alcohol actually lowers your eye pressure for a very short duration, but again, just like with marijuana, it is not um, necessarily going to do so very effectively. 
Finally, I was looking up about um, CBD. Um, that is such a new topic. And CBD, actually, cannabis has a different effect than marijuana. So what I've been able to find is that in some cases, CBD actually raises eye pressure and would go under that things that raise intraocular pressure category. So more to come on that. It'll be interesting as studies come out and we develop more information around what CBD does to intraocular pressure. But it seems like right now that is not a um, hallucinogenic free way to still use a marijuana sub. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. Don't use CBD and don't, don't count on marijuana to lower your eye pressure. There you go. Thanks guys for watching part two of my intraocular pressure series. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly tried to answer all of your questions from the first one. Likewise, if you have questions this time around, leave them in the comments down below because I will get to them. I love making follow-up videos for you guys. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell so that you never miss a video. We're here every single Wednesday at 8 o'clock, and I will see you next time.